Thank you for joining us. Welcome to our Pro's HR Hour training. My name is Sam and I have Nicole and Drew with us today to review and discuss how your employee's information moves between the modules. We are excited to answer and learn from your questions, so please type those into the chat and feel free to ask those questions as we go. If it pertains to a topic, I will ask the presenters live time, so be sure to get those in there. On to our presenters. We have Nicole, she's a senior implementation manager with over 15 years in the learning and training software space, seven of those years here with our Coro. Drew has 10 plus years in the tech industry and six of those here with our Coro as well. Nicole and Drew, I will give it over to you. All right, thanks Sam. Well, hey everybody, we're super excited to be here today because we just get excited about data. Drew does, I don't really, but <laughs> anyways, that doesn't matter. <laughs> I am excited to share this information with you and talk about the data flow and the employee data and how it can flow between all your modules. So Drew and I are here as experts in our own areas so that we could come on here and give you guys the best information possible and talk through it all. So we're gonna go through today this PowerPoint that we have here. And if you guys have been on an H hour I've done before, you know I don't really like PowerPoints. So we're gonna <laughs> get through that and some side of stuff. So we'll show you a little bit of a live demo of kind of how it can go through and what are the trigger points for an employee to move from one system to the other. So with that, Yes, here we are, our beautiful professional pictures, but you guys are getting what's better, which is the live feed of us. So that's way better than this. But yes, I'm on the implementation team. I'm a senior implementation consultant. So I've been specializing in the ATS onboarding um, performance and learning management system side of things for the last seven years. And then Drew, I'll let you go ahead and talk about your roles within our Coro. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Um, so I'm Jordan Menzel. I'm currently a partner success manager. Um, I have probably worked with some of you on the call before because my background is in implementation most recently. And before that, I was actually a product and project manager. Okay. So all excited to dive into the data. Yeah. <laughs> He didn't know I was going to throw that joke out there, but it's really true. That's I'm our not. personalities. He's a data <laughs> guy and I'm not, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Um, we first wanted to kind of give you just like the bird's eye view of what is all of this going to look like and how does it flow from one system to the other before we dive into those intricate details. And so a couple of things I want you guys to take away from this. Number one, just note how the data moves from one to the other. So what this means is we're showing you right here which ways the data moves, right? So for example, applicant tracking passes data to onboarding. There's no data that goes from onboarding to applicant tracking. The other important thing I want you guys um, to know about this as well is we fully recognize that um, we have some customers who have all of these modules. We have some customers who have two. We have some who have three. So I want to make sure that you know that the things that Drew and I are talking about here today where we're saying it goes from this module to this module like this, regardless of how many of these that you see on the screen that you have, it will still work the same for you. So that passing of data will still be the same regardless of how many of these you have, as long as it's two systems that you see connected here on the screen. There's a couple we're gonna focus on here today where it works the same for everyone. And then of course we'll get in, like I said, we'll get into those details. So first of all, like I said, <clears throat> I've specialized in the ATS and onboarding realm as well as the learning and performance. So those are the sides that I'll be focusing on today when I'm talking. And so here, let's start with the employee flow, right? So we're recruiting applicants, we're recruiting people to apply for our jobs, and we've found an individual that's a great fit for our team. So we're going to go ahead and hire them. And I have that showing here, as you can see, switching them to hired as a disposition within our applicant tracking system. So how we do that is once we've marked them as hired, then for that individual to get their new hire paperwork or for them to be passed over into onboarding, what we have to do is we do have to manually push them. So it is something where you control the timing, which is actually ideal, right? Because when we push that person 
from ATS over into onboarding. A lot of you, if you're already using the onboarding system, know that that triggers a welcome message to the new hire. So you want to be able to control when that new hire receives that welcome message and when they receive their credentials to be able to log in and do their onboarding paperwork. So that is a manual push. And I did highlight here in this screenshot, this forward facing arrow. So that's the icon that we push once someone has been marked as hired to pass them over into the onboarding system. But it's not just that click of the arrow. When we click that arrow, it's going to take us to a screen like you see here. And that's still within our applicant tracking system, but this is all the info that we're gonna pass over into onboarding. So you can see things that we've highlighted in this, um, in this slide, like username, that's what they'll use to log in to complete their paperwork. The hiring manager, that's very, very important. That's the person who will be completing the I-9 verification process. Then we have things like job title, location, salary, all those types of things. But two things that are really important to know or to call out is that we have job title and location. And those two things can actually control what new hire packet or what new hire paperwork this new um, onboarded employee is going to receive. So those are really important to make sure that you get those correct so that they get the correct paperwork. Once you've filled out this screen and selected the appropriate values on this screen at the very bottom, you can click Submit Candidate. And if you do so, then you take a look right here with me, it passes that person over into onboarding immediately. So as soon as you click Submit Candidate, that triggers those welcome messages to the new hire, and then that new hire will be able to be seen from the onboarding system. Now, something that's um, developed as we have continued to integrate between the onboarding system and the Core HR system, for those of you who are using both, is that, um, you know, obviously once the new hires completed their paperwork, then eventually we want that new hire to have an account in Core. Well, just based on the technicalities of the system and things on the back end, that new hire cannot have the same username for their onboarding paperwork as they would have for core or then subsequently LMS and performance. So what we've done is we've created a setting within the onboarding system that helps us to um, not use someone's email address that we might be using later for a core username or for an LMS or performance username. So it allows the system to kind of auto-generate the username for you so that we don't run into an issue where we take the username and onboarding and they can't use it later. So what I want you guys to do is if any of you happen to have the browser, your browser open or you happen to be um, already logged in, even better, I would actually encourage you guys I'd like to take a couple seconds because we do actually, I don't think that we're gonna take the full time today. So I do wanna take just a couple seconds. It would be great if you guys could open up the Arcoro system and go to onboarding. So I'm gonna give you just a moment to do that. And go ahead, Drew. While we're doing this, um, what, what is our best practice if I, let's say I hire an onboarding manager after we're already set up? So we want to create their username as well, but we want to make sure we avoid the duplicate. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that is the same for both onboarding, ATS, and then LMS and performance too. So the ideal, you guys, is that we get that user set up with the username we want them to have forever. We get them set up in core. We get their username generated in core, and then we create the additional users afterwards. So like a hiring manager and onboarding later, a recruiter in ATS later, a hiring manager in ATS later, and things like that. So good question. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so I hope that you guys have gotten logged in, you're in onboarding, and then if you go to administration, and then if you go to settings, you do have to scroll just a little ways down to find this setting, but there is a setting that's called enable our Coro onboarding default username. If you do not already have that checked on, do yourself a favor and check that on. I promise you it will save you a lot of pain in the end. So it's so important that I've paused a little bit to allow you to get that set up.
And here in Des Moines, it is a tradition that on Halloween to get candy, you tell jokes. So I have so many little kid jokes I could tell if I knew if you guys were doing it or not. I would tell jokes until you did it. <laughs> I, I'll spare you for now, but if we have some time in the end. <laughs> okay. You guys are going to get this slide and this presentation after we're done. So you can go back. If you didn't log in, you can go back and do it. I'm going to move on. But this is really important, and I just promise you, this is a really important setting that we have um, enabled and created for our customers to make a more seamless experience, especially for your employees. Okay, so once we have that new hire who has passed over from ATS, now they're our employee, they're going to log in and complete their paperwork, right? So they're going to complete everything from their I-9 to their federal and state W-4s, emergency contact info, sign off on policy acknowledgements, all those fun things we have to gather from our new hires. One thing I do want to point out in case you haven't seen it recently or have just forgotten, not been part of it, um, this lower right bubble here. So the info from your applicant tracking system, so from when the individual applied to your job, Things like address, personal email address, phone number, those types of things will actually automatically transfer over into the onboarding system. So anything it already has, it will keep. And then um, they just have to fill out any of that missing information, of course. There's quite a bit, but it does pass over a little bit so they don't have to re-enter in or re-key in all those pieces of information. So this is just my slide indicating or showing or talking about the fact that, okay, now our new hire has their login. Now they're going to complete and go through all the steps, right? So you can see those at the top here where they go through putting in their personal information, contact information, voluntary survey, I9W4, all the things. The next step, once they've completed their new hire paperwork, this is very important is that the next step is the I-9 verification, right? So whatever representative at your organization is doing that I-9 verification, that process is still obviously the same so that that information will pass over to CORE. And so the selected person will complete the I-9 verification with the driver's license, social security card, passport, whatever that may be. And then the new hire will be finalized once the hiring manager, the last step of their portion is to sign off on the I-9. Once they go through that, they'll get a little message saying that the new hire is completed. And then at that point, and here's that little message, this is what that looks like. And upon completion, that new hire information, including all of their documents, will then pass to CORE via API. Now, one thing I wanna talk about with this little important note that I have here at the bottom is that when we originally um, partnered with the onboarding system and the core HR system, when we started integrating those two together, we had um, an SFT, SFTP pass of information that went about every 30 minutes or so that would pass the new hire info. We have enhanced the system so that that's now an API and that data flow is real time. So if you are someone who does not have the API set up, but you're still using that SFTP, we strongly encourage you to reach out to your account manager. And so, um, well, reach out to your account manager so that, let me start that over, so that we can help you get switched over to the API so that can be a much better experience for you and that information can pass in real time. All of these in intricate detail. And again, like I said earlier, you are going to be receiving this presentation. So you'll have just like a quick glance at what all of the fields are that map to what. So the bold fields are what they're labeled in onboarding. And then the fields after that, the non-bolded fields are what they map to over on the core side. So this is the information that passes from the onboarding system into the core system. So again, I know that's a lot and I'm definitely not gonna read off all those, but just as an FYI, we do have mapping that's happening, of course, on the back end to pass information over. These are the default fields that we have set that are going to pass over and there's no changing any of these, these are set. But if there's some information 
that you did need to pass over that's not in that list. You do have a total of seven custom fields that you can create within the system that would pass information over from onboarding into core. So that might be something like t-shirt size, driver's license number, like there's driver's license state. There's a lot of different types of fields that you can pass over. A lot of different things we've seen from different customers. And so just so that you know, you do have some custom fields that you can add into there. And what you'll do is you'll create those custom fields in core first. So you'll create that field in core first, and then you'll come into onboarding and go to your custom fields in onboarding. And then we have this, see my arrow is pointed, my red arrow here is pointed to that add shared custom fields button. So that is the button you can use. And when you click on that, it'll pull up your core fields, you grab which one you want, and then it's inserted into onboarding. So to collect that in onboarding and it knows where to pass it in core. It's really very slick. And just as an FYI, remember you do have employee filled out fields. So employee fields here you can see, manager fields, it's seven combined between those two, but it can be either one, whatever works best for you. Also one thing that I wanted to make sure to note um, is that you do have the ability to pass rehires through from the onboarding system back into core. Uh, I think this is a pretty common question that I get a lot of the time. I'm sure Drew gets that question a lot. I'm sure everyone who's on the ATS onboarding, or I guess more so onboarding in the core side, rehires is a pretty common topic. And so I just wanted to make sure to clarify so that you guys are on the same page that we can rehire someone through ATS and onboarding and do the same process that you would do with a new hire now. It's just that what happens is when the system takes that individual and passes them over to core, it actually looks at their social security number. And if the social security number matches a social that's already in your core account, it recognizes that that's a rehire and then it will update information appropriately. So it will reactivate the account. It will update any information that was changed for that person. So for example, any of, those inform any of that information we showed you that was mapping, if any of that stuff changed, it passes over the new info. So you can pass over rehires and then that'll just pass over into, um, pass over into core. Hello, okay, I have a question. Um, where do the documents pass over to when the employee goes from onboarding to core? That's a good question. Can we put that on pause for just a little bit till we go into the yeah. system later? Sounds great. Is that okay. So whoever asked that, I promise you we'll answer that because that's awesome. It's awesome stuff to have. We were waiting for that for a really long time if you've been here with us for a while. <laughs> so yes, Drew will show you guys, we'll show you that in core when we get into the demonstration part. All right. And with that. You guys get to now hear, stop listening to my voice and Drew's up. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thank you, Nicole. Thanks for passing it along here. Um, yeah, really good points too. Um, <clears throat> kind of going back to the old way of sending data was through an SFTP, which was file driven. Um, the new way is API. Couple benefits. Um, one, the timing, it is immediate through the API, so it's, it's much quicker. We're actually going to get um, more information from onboarding than we would through a file. And then additionally, it reduces risk. So if, if you're currently using SFTP and you've run into like those errors where you see the import didn't come through, um, from my experience, that really doesn't happen on the API side. Um, so the risk is lower, it's immediate, and we get more data. Um, so if you are on the file driven path, I would strongly encourage you to reach out to your account manager, or if you're an implementation, talk to your implementation manager um, and get that switched over as quickly as possible. Um, so one thing is you'll notice there's going to be a new box. So up to the top right where we see that red circle, that's, we're going to see this onboarded new hire window. That's going to show up when you're on the API. And this is going to show any of the new hires that have passed through on board. Um, now, there are two different steps, which we'll see when we get the live demo. But as Nicole was saying, when the I-9 process is completed, that's when the onboarding manager has completed their steps. 
there's a part two to this. On the core side, we need the HR manager to also complete their subs. So if you recall probably from implementation, there's a section in core called required fields. Depending on what you set up as a required field, those are going to be flagged when we click into this onboarded new hire window. Um, so we, we're really we're going to get the vast majority of data from onboarding through the API. But if I went through and set up a bunch of custom fields in core um, or fields that don't exist in onboarding as required, then there's going to be some HR manager um, post onboarding steps. Nicole, we can pop over to the next slide. Fantastic. So what we're going to see on this page, I'm not going to read all the text here. We'll, we'll talk more about this as we do the live demo. Um, but we can see we're highlighted on that bottom employee. To the far right of the screen, we're going to see, see those three check boxes above the first red square. And then there's a red square to the right of that. The, the one on the left, that is our HR manager steps. And that's saying, um, did the manager click into this employee and complete the remaining fields? Once you do that, we'll see a green check mark. Secondly, to the far right, um, the onboarding manager may have already done this by the time the employee got to core, but if they did complete the I-9 section, we would see that green check mark right where that second red box is. Um, big piece here is once we get to this page, so this is the next page once we click into the onboarded new hire window, all the employees listed here until the HR manager has completed their steps, this is going to be a hyperlink. When you click into the hyperlink, it's going to take you to the employee demographic screen and it's going to walk you through um, as if you manually added an employee. So we'll get their employee demographics, compensation, direct deposit, taxes, just to give us a second look and really verify that the information is correct and then save the employee record. Nicole, perfect. Um, so ju just like anything else in core, uh, whether you're using onboarding in ATS or not, or you're using the API or not, once the employee is saved in the core, at that point, we can search for the employee, we can look for documents, we can look for tax information, demographic information. And what we listed on this page is just a few different ways that you can search for employees. Um, that, that's one thing, when I first started using the search bar, it's really great, it's dynamic. It does take a little bit of getting used to. Um, so when we search, we can search by first name or last name, social, employee ID, and then a few other statuses, and then we can even drill into an advanced search. But thank you, Nicole. And this is going back to the question, Sam, that you asked us. So once, once the employee is loaded to core and the onboarding manager has also completed their steps, all documents are going to come from onboarding to core. This is a, in my opinion, this is really big for HR managers. Everyone that I've talked to, um, if you're on the file driven uh, data feed from onboarding to core, the documents do not come over. If you're on the API, you do get all the documents. Where those are going to land in core is once we search for the employee, it's going to be under employee documents. And we'll, we'll show this on the live demo um, once we get through this slide. Perfect. Thank you, Nicole. So just a few things to call out. Um, compensation does come over. Direct deposit does come over from onboarding. If you're using an API for, or if you're connected to payroll, or if you need additional information, there may be a few fields that you need to fill out um, for specifically for compensation and direct deposit before you save the employee. So th this is really just a call out. Many of you might not be on payroll, but if you are, rate code does not come over. And then also for direct deposit, there's a few fields on that screen as well that don't come over. Um, so we just want to be aware of these and make sure you capture that information when you're processing a new hire.
So direct deposit, um, same thing. The bottom square that we can see here, those are the two things that we really want to pay attention to. You may or may not need them, um, but if you do need them, earnings deduction code and then override pre-note. Those are two, um, two items that do not come over from onboarding. So just call if you are using us to push data to payroll, um, make sure to confirm with our team if you do need these filled out. Perfect. Another enhancement for the API is state taxes. So on the file driven feed, we were getting federal tax. If, you, if you're not on that API and you do switch over, in addition to all the documents and the immediate data, we also get these state um, taxes coming up. Perfect. So now we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more in depth when we do the live demo. Um, one thing that's great about the API is if you are an HR manager on the core side, anytime you process an employee, you're most likely doing it from that new hire window. Strong benefit to processing an employee from here is we have the option to essentially do everything at one time, meaning we can process the employee for benefits if you're using benefits. We can create their new hire window to make their benefit elections. We can create their username and we can send out an email. So we can do that all from the, from the same screen that you're probably using right now, um, which is the new hire window. All right, and back to you, Nicole. Nicole, I think you're on mute. Thank you. I didn't want you guys to hear me breathing. While I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so this is the corporate talent side. This is where I pick it back up for the LMS and performance side of things. So we've been talking about lots of APIs up until this point. We are still SFTP based for the information flowing from core into talent. Now, same thing as we talked about before on the onboarding to core, here's now the core to talent mapping for the data fields that flow from one spot to the other. I'm not gonna read through those, but those are the defaults. And um, if there's anything that you guys need adjusted or there's a few minor changes or things like that, we can certainly accommodate that. Just talk with either the support team or with your implementation manager and we can we can help that along and help get those changes made. Uh, but the biggest thing to note is that this is an SFTP feed and it's running every four hours. So any changes that you make right now may not pass over for another four hours, just depending on when that, um, when that feed is going to flow over. So just so that you know, there's about a four hour delay in that information passing over, whether it's a new hire coming through, passing from core into talent, or whether it might be changes, like maybe you make a performance manager change for the performance side of things. That also will take a little bit to flow over. Another thing that's really important for you guys to also know as part of that information flow over is that talent has a lot of fields that it requires. And so a user will error if all those required fields or all of those requirements are not met. So for that SFTP, we do have an email error log. If you are not currently receiving that, make sure you let our support team know or let your account manager know, and we'll get you set up with that right away. But it'll be an email similar to what you see here on the screen. And so I just wanted to give you guys a quick, like if no one has explained this to you, I wanted to give you just a quick way that I kind of glance through and figure out what some of the errors are myself when I'm helping customers troubleshoot. So if you're receiving this email notification or if you're going to reach out so that you are receiving this notification, it will tell you the user. So for example, this was Jose and he did not upload because of his location. So what that means is chances are the location field that was passed from core doesn't match a location field in the LMS and performance side. So you just need to create that location or make sure there's one that's exactly the same as what was passing from core and then he'll start passing over. Same with things if you're getting like a location error, things like that. 
Username can be a little tricky. Um, in the demonstration, we're gonna show you guys and just verify that you know how to generate usernames in Core. So if a username is missing and there is not a username yet, that will throw an error and things like that. So you can kind of see, it'll tell you exactly what field it's looking for and why it's erring. So then you can go into Core, make the fixes, and then next time it passes over, it should correct those. So once that passes over, then just very simply put, Sally can now navigate or whatever user it may be. We're about to talk about Emily in the system. They can navigate to the LMS and performance through their core login. So they can use the login they got when they started logging into core. And then they'll use this little waffle icon in the upper right corner, same as you admins do to navigate between the different, um, the different modules. So now at this point, we are going to get logged in and give you guys just get into the system so you can see all these spots that we were talking about instead of just seeing screenshots. Nicole, one, one last thing, and we'll, we'll talk about this during the demo as well. Um, we, we also have an SFTP file that pushes data from core to exact time as well. Um, and then there's other places that data gets transferred um, so I, I was referring to payroll integrations earlier. So we do have data flowing outside of core um, to different payroll environments. Um, same thing, exact time is internal, but we do have that data pushing from exact time. Exact time can push data back to core. Um, we, we are gonna demo that piece today. Um, so if, if you'd like to hear more about that, please do reach out to your account manager. Uh, but just wanted to put that out there that there is a few other sections that we do have data moving uh, to and from. Perfect. Thanks, Drew. Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to take my modules again, like I said. And so here we've got an applicant tracking system. This is where we receive all of our applicants. So yes, I'm actually also going to go ahead and turn off my video so that you guys can focus on the screen here. And then we also can make sure we don't have connectivity issues. So here's our applicant tracking system. I am going to navigate into my job by clicking on the job title. And then within here, I have my applicants. And so we had talked about earlier, you know, you're going through and processing your applicants. And then when you find someone you'd like to hire, we're going to go ahead and mark them and disposition them as hired. So I've talked with Emily, we've interviewed, we're going to click on this little pencil icon right here and switch her to hired. Now in doing so, especially for those of you who are familiar with the applicant tracking system, we know that by dispositioning someone, that's going to move them into the inactive space because the active is just those people who were actively recruiting and are actively in our hiring process. Emily is no longer there, she's now a new hire for us. So she's we're not actively recruiting her anymore. So she's hired. Now that she's hired, you can see here's this little icon, this manage applicant post hire process. So this little forward facing arrow I can click on and it brings me to this screen here where we go ahead and verify the username, which if we have that setting on, this will auto generate a random username for you. So that setting we talked about earlier, then you select the job title and the location. Remember those two can drive someone's new hire packet or their paperwork. So very important we get that correct. Then we can select the hiring manager, the pay amount, the employee type, their start date. And then at the very bottom, if you've been with us for a while, we haven't always had this. So something new to also note is that you can pass the application as well as an offer letter. If you did send an offer letter by checking here, you can pass those over into core as well. So you're choosing if you want those to pass to core, or I'm sorry, pass to onboarding, my fault, pass over to onboarding, the application and the offer letter. So now when I click submit candidate, Emily is going to pass over into onboarding. So it does take just a second to get her passed. You'll get a successful message here it does quickly disappear. So you gotta be on, on the ball and watching for that. But what's happened now is that has triggered the welcome message for Emily. So now she has the two notifications, the welcome message, as well as her account verification email. So she can log in and complete her paperwork. 
So now I use the waffle icon and I'm going to navigate into onboarding. So Emily will show up in our incomplete new hires area. Okay, so she'll show up in the incomplete new hires area. So then once Emily completes all of her paperwork, then she'll show up in the manager action items for you to process the I-9. Now, I wasn't going to go through that process for you guys because all of you having been in HR know exactly what it's like and you've probably been through that process who knows how many times, right? Entering an I-9 verification and doing all those things. So I don't have those queued up for you here today. But do know that once they're done, manager action items is where you'll go ahead and complete that new hire. Once that new hire has been completed, they will display in the recently hired area. So here you can see I have Emily Martins and she completed her new hire paperwork. So I know that she's now finished. So what that also means is that now I know that she is going to be passing on over to CORE. So at this point, I am going to pass over to Drew and he'll show you guys all of the live things then from the core side. Fantastic, thank you so much, Nicole. And Nicole, just wanna confirm with you that you can see my screen here. We can, yep, perfect. Awesome. All right, so for anyone that's currently on the API and if you're not, um, what we'll see here, if you are on the API, is the onboarded new hires. What's really cool about this is this is going to be a direct feed of data. So the second Nicole finished onboarding an employee, we're going to have some information in core. Um, and that's that's going to be real time within seconds. We still do have our new hires window. Um, so once we finish processing or once we finish onboarding this new hire, we're gonna see them actually get added to the new hire window where we can process them. So first thing we wanna do here is click into the hyperlink on the onboarded new hire window. And here we can see Emily. This is the employee that Nicole just onboarded. Now, a few slides ago, we were talking about the check boxes under these two. So under the onboarding uh, manager complete column, we can see that Nicole or the onboarding manager already completed the I-9 stuff. This is good because this, this is gonna be critical to getting our documents and state taxes in the core. Um, we, we still have to finish completing the employee from an HR perspective in core, but if we, let's say we did complete this and we see a checkbox here, and we do not see a checkbox here, the documents would not be pushed. Same thing, let's say you um, onboarded a new hire and the HR uh, administrator and the core section completed their steps. You search for the employee, you don't find their documents. I would come back here and make sure that we see this checkbox. Most likely you wouldn't, um, at which point you'd want to instruct your onboarding manager to complete the I-9 step. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and click into Emily. Um, this is gonna be a hyperlink. So when I click on Emily, this is gonna take us to Emily's demographic pages. It's gonna allow us to click through each of these tabs, as well as compensation, taxes, direct deposit, and positions. So what we can do here, um, I guess one call out here, if we had any required fields, we should see a list of required fields up here. Um, so if it's data that did not push from onboarding the core, we should see a list up here where my mouse is, um, essentially telling us which fields we're missing that we need. Secondly, um, a really strong benefit to this is this gives you as the core um, admin to really take a look at the data and confirm its um, accuracy before saving them officially in the core. So just like any other um, employee that you search for in core, we're gonna have our personal tab. This is gonna have stuff like name, address, social, um, 
personal email, birthday, that kind of information. On our employee page, um, this is where we have employee ID. So again, if, if you're a payroll client, this is gonna be really crucial. We, we do wanna make sure we have an employee ID. We have our work email, employee status, ACA status. Um, what, one thing we do wanna make sure we select is our pay schedule. Now in this case, uh, just to call out, because you probably noticed this, this is a test account. So we do have um, so some data might not be accurate in here. So we see two uh, 2022 pay schedules. Um, if you did have two different pay schedules, you would want to make sure that they're labeled correctly. So if you have one that's weekly, one that's bi-weekly, we, we do want to make sure we have them labeled correctly. But for this purpose, I'll just go ahead and select this first one. Everything looks good so far. We have our EEO information. We have our user defined fields. We do not have cost centers, uh, but we do have veteran status here. So let's say all this looks good. I'll go ahead and click save. Once we click save on demographic info, and I can go back. So if, if I'm like, oh, I missed something, I can just click back on the demographic tab. But once I do click save, it's going to take me to the next tab, which is compensation. So this is, we had a screenshot of this, um, and it's more so on the payroll side, um, if, you, if you do have an integration, depending on which payroll company you're pushing data to, uh, you might need rate code. So in this case, I'll just select default. This looks good, and add record. Um, so in this test account, I apologize, but maybe this pay schedule isn't fully set up. So I'm just gonna leave this as base right, right now. And then we'll move on to taxes. Now- Can you just pop in for a second? Of course. I thought this was kind of important to bring up. So someone mentioned, is the profile section and the active employee section going to be updated? It's currently showing two different people. So um, what I believe he's talking about is up top it says Jordan Masters, and then it says Emily. So I was wondering if we could call out what's going on yes. there. That, that is a great call out. So this, this profile card up here, um, this is always going to default to the last employee that you search for. So no, we, we are, we're paying attention to the data down here. Right now we are looking at Emily. Any changes we make are going to be to Emily not to Jordan. That is a great question. Um, we have we have talked internally about this. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if we have any changes coming in the near future, um, but that is a good call out. When you are onboarding, do make sure you're paying attention to the information under the personal tab because it is it is not going to be changing for Jordan in this case. So I'll, I'll keep going through here. Um, back on the to compensation, compensation and taxes, whether you make changes while you're onboarding the employee or not, this information is already in core. So even if I even if I don't click add record, or if I don't make any changes or edits to this data, it's already going to be in core. So the the big push here is once I save demographics, this employee is now pushed to core from onboarding. Uh, but just so you can see, we, we do have our tax information here, our direct deposit information, and positions. We don't have any positions, but we could add a position if we have them built in core. Uh, for this test account, we don't have any positions built out. Um, but if you did have them built out, we could add the position. Um, review, this is just telling us kind of where we are. So the employee record was updated. Um, looks like this may have been a rehire, I'm not sure Nicole, but um, as of now, this employee is pushed. So if I went back to the home screen here, 
will notice onboarded new hires has dropped down to one. So we were at two. Now we only have one in here. So, um, right. Drew, while you're still in the system, I do have two other questions that I think you could probably easily navigate to. Um, one of the one of them is where do cost centers get entered? And I believe you you went over it, but didn't quite show up. So, do you mind navigating back to where cost centers are entered? Sure. So, since that employee is already out of the onboarded new hire window, I'm just going to search for the employee. Is this is actually it's, it's going to be the same way? It's, it's going to look very similar to the view that we were just in. So once I search for the employee, I'll just go back to employee demographic info. And then it's going to be this tab down here, cost centers. Now, in this case, um, this employee or this account does not have cost centers set up. Uh, but if they did, this is where we'd select the cost centers for this employee. Perfect. And then we have one more question within the system, and it is, can you have subfolders in the document modules? Where the documents are stored, are you able to make subfolders? No, we, we don't really have a way to create subfolders. Um, I would like to hear more. Um, wh whoever wrote the question, if, if we could add a little more context to like the need for that, that, that would be something um, we, we can explore. Yeah, and we can even follow up with you after. So that was a great question. We'll definitely follow up with you. Fantastic. What I'll do, I'm going to go back into Emily. So on, on that document question, same area. Once I search for the employee, hover over employee, select documents. These are all the documents that came over from onboarding. So the, these are going to be direct loads. Um, if we click into them, this will open another um, another tab or another or another window. But this will allow you direct access to these documents. Perfect. Thank you, Drew. Of course. the The next part here is now that we have the data coming from onboarding the core. The, the only way to get core data to export anywhere outside of the system is we have to create their user ID. What that does, um, for, for you as the admin, that's going to be uh, either creating their username or processing the employee. There's a couple different ways to do it, um, but there is a best practice, which is through the new hires window here. Um, if if you ever go into performance or LMS or exact time and you're like, hey, we onboarded this new employee, why aren't they there? <clears throat> if you didn't get any errors for the employee, most likely it's because they don't have a username created. So if I go back to Emily and go back to employee demographic information, all the way at the far right, this account tab, we can see that there's no username meaning this employee has not been processed. They don't have a username. Uh, they have no way to log into the system. And their data will not be automatically pushed from core to talent or exact time or to other modules. So we do need to make sure we process the employee and get the username set up. Now there's a couple different ways we can do this. Um, when you first start implementation, we usually do this in mass. So we'll do this for all employees at one time. But when we're talking about individual employees coming from onboarding to core, our best practice is to do that through the new hire window here. And let's look for Emily. I can see Emily right here. So what we would do here is best practice really is to select the employee. And we can see a checkbox to the far right. Then at the top of the screen, we can see generate user accounts, email the employee their account verification, and open the enrollment for the new hire benefits. So we would also select this box here 
and then click process. What this will do, um, it really does multiple pieces. First of all, it's gonna process the employee and put them in the default benefit elections. Secondly, it's gonna create the employee's username and it's gonna send them a verification email. <clears throat> and then third, it's also gonna create a new hire event window. So the employee, when they log in, they can elect their benefits. Now, in this case, we, we do not have benefits set up in this test account. So I'll show you a different way we can do this. So for Emily here, I would simply click into or search for Emily. Then I'll go to demographic info. I'm gonna confirm that Emily has a work email, it does. And then on account, I can click the create username when record is saved and then click save. Once we do that, you'll see this screen immediately changes. We can see Emily's username. What that means is now this employee can be passed from core to talent. Um, it can also be passed, she can also be passed from core to exact time or to other places throughout the system. Um, this is a really good place to verify. If you think there, there may be an issue pushing an employee's data from one module to the next, I would definitely search for the employee, go to account, make sure we have a user. Fantastic. And for now, I will pass it back to Nicole. Sounds great. Thanks, Drew. Of course. All right. So lastly, on the talent side, not a lot to report after that. Um, thanks, Drew, for talking and emphasizing about that generating username. That's something that I see on my side that causes issues all the time. So we just have to make sure the username is generated so that we can pass them over. And the most important thing about that is that then it gives that seamless experience for your employees so they can navigate from one system to the other. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use the waffle icon up here to navigate over into learning. And so I'm still logged in as an admin, but one thing I wanted to remind you guys, if you wanted to view the system as if you were that new hire, is don't forget that on the talent side, so on the performance and LMS side, you have the impersonation option. So we could click on this impersonate button and then go in and see, for example, here our new hire, Emily, who passes over. Now, I have pre-set up this one because remember we talked about before, this is an SFTP pass. So it could take up to four hours for that individual to pass from core into, um, into the LMS and performance. So I, I just was guessing that you guys probably didn't wanna hang out with me and Drew for four hours <laughs> on the phone while we waited for them to pass. So I got this in here so you could see what it looks like. Um, now you can see Emily, she just has default end user um, access within the system and I can tell that I'm impersonating her by the impersonating label that it has up here by the name. So you can go in as them. Um, one cool thing too is don't forget that from a learning management perspective, so from an LMS perspective, if you know that you have training that needs to go out immediately to new hires or to everyone, you can set up auto assignments that happen right away when that user is passed from core into LMS. So keep in mind that you can do things like that by auto assigning to certain job codes, certain departments, certain locations, or even utilizing the group's functionality within there. All right, so that is really it, I think, from our demonstration perspective. We just wanted to give you guys a little bit more information around um, around those types of things and just be able to see like the information and then actually see it in the system. So where to go from here, just real quick, I know we're running towards the end of time um, and I'll go ahead and share my video again with you guys. 
you can see me again, uh, where to go from here. So make sure that configuration we talked about in onboarding, make sure you go in and set that. Talk with your account manager about the onboarding to core data transfer and make sure if you're not already on the API that you get to the API. And if you are the only one from your organization that's here and you had other people who weren't here, please share this information with your teammates. We know that it's very useful. We've given this presentation to a couple of our other customers and uh, had a lot of really good feedback. So we're hoping that you guys um, feel the same way. So with that, there's us, here's our, here's our information. But then lastly, do we have any other questions? So we do, we have some amazing questions. I will ask one of them out loud right now and the rest we will follow up after this presentation and give you some personal time to, to work through those questions. Absolutely. So let's see. Uh, how long do the documents stay in the electronic filing cabinet? Uh, in the onboarding system, the documents will stay in the electronic filing cabinet as long as you're with our coral. So they will, we're not gonna remove any of that information within the system. Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, I would love to get to some of the other ones, but I think it's better if we reach out to you individually and get those questions answered. So we appreciate everyone's time today on the call. Uh, we look forward to seeing you the rest of November on all of the nine at nine to continue your learning journey with our forum. So thank you, Nicole and Drew, and we will talk to you all soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.